probably the oldest friend Milton Berle has in this room tonight. I, we go back, I first met Milton in 1943. He was a major, major star. And I was a, I'm a young guy, my third or fourth year in the business. And uh, you, you know, he, Milton in 1943 had to see him to believe him. He was tall and thin and handsome. And he had a vitality that was unbelievable, you know, full of thin, vigor, energy. Uh, Carl told you about him at the, uh, at the carnival. And, you know, if you ever saw him in low state or anything, he was, he, he, he was a human dynamo. He never walked on the stage. He never ran on the stage. He like, was catapulted out, you know. It was like, a, you know, they shot him out of a cannon. And he sang and he danced and he did card tricks. And he juggled and he told a thousand jokes. He was just unbelievable. Well, when he was in the 70s, he was still doing, you know, singing and dancing and, and playing instruments and carrying on the stage. Way in the 70s, just like he did in 1943. Like, all of a sudden, my idea of a big evening is to sit home and watch my legs go to sleep. <laughs> I said, suddenly I can't eat cream of wheat anymore. It's too spicy. <laughs> You know, hints, little hints that you're getting older. I said, last week I worked in Atlantic City, and one afternoon I was on a boardwalk, a woman came over, and she congratulated me on the beautiful alligator shoes I was wearing. And I was standing there barefoot. So I had like a hundred jokes like that, hints of getting older. And, but it, you know, in fact, it's probably the only routine I've done in the last 58 years that Milton didn't steal from me. Because it didn't fit him. He wasn't getting old of this guy. He was unbelievable. He had the same fire and the same energy. He finally started to slow down a little when he was 80. On his 80th birthday, he said to me, You know, Jan, I finally know what the hell you're talking about, getting little hints, you're getting older. He said, I finally got a hint. I said, You're kidding. He said, yep. I don't dance anymore. You hear this? And then I began to notice things about him physically. Uh, he got a lot of what with him, you know what I mean? The hearing was going slowly. And you spend an evening with him, well, you hear, what? What? You know, Milton, I just came back from Chicago. I was a big hit. What? I just came back from Chicago. I was a big hit. He said, well, I wouldn't expect anything less from you. You're a great comedian. Now me. What? I hope so. It's crazy, you know what I mean? So we've had the last 13 years been marvelous, two Jewish gentlemen going to restaurants, screaming at each other, so to be heard. What? What? You know. And <laughs> he remembered every joke he ever told. He remembered every joke he ever heard, <laughs> which is redundant. <laughs> he'd hear it, then he'd tell it. You know, it's like the same thing. But, you know, you know, for 70 years, he had two favorite jokes. He managed to tell it in almost every show he ever did. Uh, the jokes are, now you probably heard it, he did it for 70 years, for God's sake. Uh, the jokes are, he says, I'm so unlucky, if they saw the woman in half, I'd get the part that eats. <laughs> and the next joke was, I'll show you how unlucky I am. I bought a suit with two pair of pants and burnt the hole in the jacket. <laughs> He's been doing this for 70 years. The other night, Boy, did I feel bad. He got up. He said, I'm so unlucky. If they saw the woman in half, i burn a hole in my jacket. <laughs> so slow. You know, I was told to tell a joke and sit down, but there was no way I could tell one joke. After you know, all the years we've been together, I want to give him a little, a little insight to you. And so I hope I, no one feels that I was on too long. Of course, Bill, you wouldn't understand that, you know, somebody being on too long. <laughs> So I will tell my little joke and sit down, okay? There's a little elderly Jewish woman. She's a widow, lives in the Bronx in New York, has two little rooms. Every Friday night, the son would come for dinner. She'd make him a real Sabbath, a real Shabbos dinner. And then after dinner was over, every Friday night was the same thing. She says, no, when are you going to get married? I want to be a grandmother before I die, please. He says, don't worry, Mama, someday I'll meet the right girl, I'll marry and so forth. So this goes on every Friday night, the same thing, when he get married, blah, blah, blah. One night, the doorbell rang, she goes to open the door Friday night. He's standing there with three young ladies, a brunette, a blonde, and a redhead. He says, Mama, he says, I want you to meet Shirley, Sylvia, and Dolly. She says, how do you do? She says, do you mind very much if I take my son on the side? I want to go privately with 
So she texts me on the side, she says, are you crazy? You bring me three new people. You know I only cook for two. If you want to have company, call me in the afternoon. He says, relax, mama, don't worry. They're not going to stay. I'm just going to be here for the moment. I'll tell you why they're here. I finally fell in love a few months ago. And I, I found a girl that I feel is going to be my wife. I didn't want to tell you about it because in case I proposed and she turned me down, you'd feel bad. But thank God last night I proposed, she accepted me, so mama, I'm going to get married. Now the reason I brought these three girls is I want to test you. I want to see how well you know my taste. Now you never met these girls before, you never saw them, you never talked to them. Which one of these girls do you think I selected to be my wife? She said, they were very easy, the redhead. He says, that's fantastic. You never saw them, you never spoke to them. How did you know that that's the one I picked to be my wife? She said, because I hate her. <laughs> hey, no, you don't have to worry. I don't hate you, I love you. And it's my humble pleasure, and I hope we go on for another. You know, as they say in Jewish business, 110, that means until you're 110. That's my wish, and my wish is that I'm around to get up to it. God bless you, I love you. Thank you, Jasper.